This is the weekly review for the week of June 5th to June 9th, as well as this week's Sunday preparation. So this week, for me as a whole, I was kind of all over the place because I was flopping between uh, EU and ES because I couldn't really find anything, any like clean setups. So what I ended up doing is just I ended up back testing the whole week for ES uh, yesterday and just laying out all of the um, setups that presented themselves. So Monday, there really wasn't anything. Um, I think we had that one high impact news on Monday, which is what this WIC was, but there was no 2022 model um, formed in here. So coming into Tuesday, this one, uh, this red box right here is that weekly um, gap that ICT was talking about. So what I noted was how at 9.30, we had this Judas swing down and this blue box here is a daily fair value gap. So this one right here. And we rated previous days low with SMT into that daily fair value gap and also had a Judas swing below the 830 New York open price right here. Then we got this displacement up at 1010 is when this candle closed. And looking at this in hindsight, this was super a super clear entry here because we generated perfectly clean equal highs after a higher time frame raid into a higher time frame PD array. And then we have the um, confluence of the fair value gap breaker order block and inversion fair value gap here to target a little bit more than five handles to take that buy side. So this was a really, really beautiful uh, trade set here that I noted. And also this level right here, the small box is that new week opening gap. So that's one of the things that I also noted after watching ICT's video is that, and one of the things that I wrote down in my journal was that ICT said when multiple, um, multiple pairs hit their higher time frame PD arrays at the same time, we should expect consolidation. And I think this is the thing he talked about in that three hour live stream he did this week. So if we just look at this week as a whole in the big picture, we see this is that weekly um, gap that ICT mentioned several weeks ago here, this one right here. And if we look, once we hit that on Monday, we pretty much just had a consolidation week. And as we know, consolidation weeks just gravitate around that new week opening gap, which is exactly what we were doing this whole week. And also at the same time, respecting the upper and lower portion of that uh, weekly gap. <clears throat> so this is something that I definitely put um, in my journal and made a special notation for. So... This uh, setup here was also, not only was this buy side equal highs the draw on liquidity, you could have also had a draw on liquidity of that new week opening gap coupled with this hourly fair value gap. So you could have taken a partial here and then um, closed the rest of the trade with a second partial here. So looking back, I think this setup was super, super clear. And also it's in the silver bullet time window with an entry at 10.15 a.m. <clears throat> so going into the next day on Wednesday, now ICT did a review of this trade. Anytime we create equal highs like this, I do get a little bit nervous. Um, 
and shorting when we have equal highs generated above. Um, <clears throat> but I still added this to my journal nonetheless because ICT talked about how we hit the high of this higher time frame PD array, and that should be the catalyst of us looking at this as bearish when we have a shift in market structure here, coming back up into the Fair Valley Gap. Personally, I don't think I would have would ever take this trade. This one here with this much larger displacement, um, with us generating equal lows here with this low and this low, after violating several bullish PD arrays here. Um, so this order block here is violated, and then this order block here is violated <coughs> uh, with this candle's wick. And then we come up here, uh, back up into a premium, and then I, I feel like I would feel much more comfortable taking this sell after we have all of this evidence here um, violating these bullish PD arrays and having two market structure shifts rather than just taking this Fair Valley Gap here after a very short-term market structure shift with these equal highs just above. So I think at least from a scalp, this one in my opinion would be much, this setup here would be much more high probability and this would be the one that if I had saw this live I probably would have taken. So we hit that Fair Valley Gap come down and then we generate another set of equal lows and come back into the Fair Valley Gap, back down into again that new week opening gap because we're in a consolidation profile for this entire week. <clears throat> so I noted how this could have been a partial and then you could have taken another partial at the new week opening gap. So another nice day on Wednesday's trading. Then Coming into Thursday's trading, we still now have these equal highs left above price, and we took out previous day's low very early on Thursday and like the first hour of trading, and we had an SMT with YM. And then we had here this 15 minute order block after price had a little bit of displacement up. And now at the 930 opening here, we come back into that order block and we take a low with SMT with NQ. And at the same time, this 930 Judas swing here is below that New York opening price, just like on uh, Tuesday, the setup on Tuesday. And here on the one minute, I noted how we broke uh, or had a market structure shift here after taking sell side with SMT into an order block back into this blue daily PD array, uh, daily, yeah, daily PD array, but specifically a Fair Valley Gap. And then we came back down into the Fair Valley Gap here, breaker, order block, and also, oh no, well, there is an inversion Fair Valley Gap here, but we didn't quite make it down into it. And we have these nice equal high buy side liquidity up in here to target. And then again, throughout the rest of the PM session or the AM session, we gravitate back up into that new week opening gap because we have a consolidation profile. Uh, but I did also note another setup on the M5 chart. <clears throat> it didn't have as many confluences for entry as the M15 or uh, M1 rather. We only had this breaker here. Um, there was no fair valley gap in here. All of this was balanced. And then I did note the CE of this must have deleted it, but we came back into that. So what I noted for this M5 setup here was that we didn't return into discount of this um, range here 
after we had a market structure shift. And I noted that that could have been because there was nothing really to retrace back into down in here because all of this price action was balanced. And the only PD array here was really the breaker. So that's why we only needed to dip down into the breaker before continuing higher up into that new week opening gap due to the consolidation profile of this week. <clears throat> so I felt that was important. And then, oh, Thursday's PM session. I actually did look at this one live. Um, so because we still had those equal highs above price on Thursday, I was looking in the PM session for the silver bullet trade and I was seeing if we could have a retracement on the lunch stops. And <clears throat> that happened with NQ. So NQ took the lunch low and YM made a higher high with the lunch low, but BS unfortunately made equal lows. So even though here we had this shift in market structure with this high right here, and or right here was with this wick, shift in market structure, came back down into the Fair Valley gap here, no breaker, and then we came back down once more into that same Fair Valley gap. I wanted to see um, another more significant bullish displacement creating a breaker with this candle right here, and I set a limit on this Fair Valley gap right here. Um, and I thought we were going to just IF, IFOED it and come up to take this equal highs buy side, but my entry didn't get filled. Um, we never came back down into that Fair Valley gap or breaker and just ran up to take this equal highs uh, buy side. And again, I was looking for these equal highs up here from Monday's high and Wednesday's high as the drawn liquidity. So then coming into Friday, we took those equal highs here on ES, but NAS did not take Monday's high. So ES created the high of the week here on Friday where NAS did not because we didn't take Monday's high here. So I noted that SMT and we also had a short term SMT here market structure shift and we came back down into or came back up into this for valley gap here I like this setup here much more because we had more significant displacement down violating some more PD arrays like this order block and this fair valley gap here came back up into um, this premium fair valley gap and also created relative equal lows here to target and you had the five handles deliver here um, then this retracement was pretty sloppy because it violated the high of this fair valley gap here We still respected, uh, at least the bodies respected this fair value gap back here. And then we had a sell off down back into the weekly gap here, but didn't quite make it back down to the new week opening gap, but very close to the new week opening gap. So this entire week was consolidation as discussed. Um, because we hit that higher time frame PD array, but also I feel is because next week we have, or this week we didn't have any news, and also next week we have a ton of high impact news. So we have CPI on Tuesday and then FOMC on Wednesday, and more high impact news Thursday. So I'm not sure how this week is going to go for trading because we should probably steer clear from CPI and FOMC. Um, but ICT noted in 
<clears throat> one of his review videos that he's still bullish on ES. And when I look at dollar, so ES kind of got back in sync with dollar this week, which is why I kind of started looking at it again. But um, the seasonal tendency still suggests that dollar is going to be bullish for June. Like we may have one more week of bearishness according to the seasonal tendency, but for the rest of June, it shows that dollar should be bullish. And so far, we're still respecting the mean threshold of this order block here. Um, so last week, I was anticipating price to hit this order block, and then this week, continue trading higher. But we just really kind of just consolidated this week. So we, really, next week is going to probably give us the displacement to see whether we're going to go higher or lower on this. But hopefully, ES and dollar get back in sync, and they don't just continue both going higher again. Um, but so far, dollar still looks bullish, and so does ES, because it looks like it wants to take this August high. Because this is kind of like, from this consolidation that we've been in, just kind of getting tighter and tighter and tighter, this is the most pronounced high that is on the chart. Um, so I feel like this is going to be a significant draw on liquidity for ES in this coming week that we can maybe just wick up there and then reverse, but we have to see about that. But ICT gave us some guidelines for what he wants to see, and he said that we shouldn't, or price shouldn't trade below this low here, because this already came down into this order block here. So he said to watch the volume and balance on the weekly chart right here, and the consequent encroachment of this wick. So those are the two areas that I'm going to leave on my chart to see if they're respected this week and if we have any bullish setups form. Um, also, I noted how we have this H4 breaker. We took sell side here and made the low of the week on Wednesday, where YM made the low of the week on Thursday, uh, on Tuesday rather. So we have that SMT there. So... Really, I'm just going to see what price um, what price does on Monday, and then if we consolidate, and then Tuesday if we take Monday's high or low and give a setup from there. Um, but ICT also noted that he's just waiting right now since we hit that weekly uh, gap, so I think that we should probably do the same because uh, I could see ES and dollar both going higher, which is not super high probability. So we just have to wait and let price show its hand to us for the next move that we're going to make. So we'll see how this, uh, this week pl plays out. It's going to be pretty crazy, but let's get to it. <clears throat> 